Nehemiah chapter 6. Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah, the Gershom, the Arabian. All right, we're back to the enemies of Israel again. Chapter 5, they show up. Chapter, I mean, chapter 4, they show up. Chapter 5, it was inside the own people of Israel. And what you're going to see 4, 5, and 6 is troubles found in Israel, troubles found in the church, and troubles found in a Christian life. For Nehemiah and the children of Israel, it was the enemies of Israel, enemies of God, Israel themselves, and we're back to the enemies of God. Inside the church, people who don't like the church, people who hate the church, are an enemy. People inside the church, Christians will cause trouble. People in the church who are not Christians will cause trouble from within. And then again, the world will cause trouble to, to the church. Inside of a Christian, you will have people who are not saved, people who are against you and the Bible. Then you will have your family, and your inner friends, and your co-workers. They will be your enemies. And then, again, the world. We're back to the world. We're back to those that hate God. <clears throat> and the rest of our enemies. So just don't think that you're a child of God. That's it. You don't have no more enemies. Jesus said, love your enemies. Pray for them. They're not going to go away. Jesus said, marvel not at the world hate you. All they that li live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you don't have enemies, if you don't have anybody hating you, you don't have anybody trying to stop you, you're not living a Christian life. And I, I put that on the Bible. If you don't have Satan after you, you don't have the world after you, you're not living according to the Bible. Jesus said, marvel not if the world hates you. And all they that live godly, Paul writes, shall suffer persecution. It's a Bible fact. Heard that I had built builded the wall, and that there was no breach left therein. The come to the point is there are no holes in the wall no more. The rubble's been cleared and they've been joined together. Parentheses important note, though at that time had I not set up the doors upon the gates. And we read through that whole work in uh, chapter 3. So people are still able to come in and out without protection. That Sam Bauer and the Gershom sent unto me, they come to him, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages, plural, in the plain of Ono, but they thought to do me mischief. So they're like, Nehemiah, come with us. Come here. Come over here to this place. And their whole idea is, number one, get Nehemiah alone to rebuke his character, to rebuke who he is, and to harm him. We find this with Joseph when he was left alone with Boniface's wife. If we cannot attack the people on the wall, we can attack their leader. Be forewarned when you got the enemy and they invite you and they want you. It's not for your good intention. Be forewarned. And I sent messengers onto them. He didn't give bother to answer. Go tell those idiots for me. I'm busy. I'm building for God. Don't interrupt your work for the enemy. Saying, I am doing a great work of God so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? You're the enemy. You're against God. I ain't taking the time for you. Kind of bold. Kind of strict. But Nehemiah knows that these men will not get right. They are not going to come to the truth. They are an obstacle in the way. Yet, they sent unto me four times after this sort. Come, come with us. Come here. Come over here. Come over here. Come here. Come here. Four times. 
And I answered them at the same minute. I'm doing a great work. Leave me alone. I'm not coming down to you. Then sent Sambawa his servant. So Sambawa is not doing no more. He sent his servant. Unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. So Nehemiah is there at the wall. Whatever part of the wall. He's there. He's building. Here comes Sambawa's servant. I got a letter for you, sir. Where it was written? Here's the letter. How many letters have there been in Ezra and Nehemiah? A lot of them. It is reported among the heathen, Gentiles, non-Jews, and Gashemum saith it, I mean, names them out, that thou, Nehemiah, and the Jews, think to rebel for which cause you buildeth the wall, that you, thou mayest be their king according to these words. They did that in Ezra. You're building the city and we're going to tell the king that you're going to fight the king. You're not going to pay taxes. You're not going to be a, a, a loyal subject under the king. That was a lie. And Ezra, they weren't building the city. They were building the temple. We discussed that. Now they're like, Nehemiah, you're going to set yourself up as a king. We can't get to the fact is that you're going to use the city against We've already had that argument. We've already had that trouble. And we lost. <coughs> Let's try something. All right. Nehemiah, you're going to be the king. Look, look what else they lie about. And that thou, Nehemiah, has also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. They're trying to use blackmail. If you don't come down and talk to us, we're going to tell them that you have prophets here and everybody's preaching King Nehemiah. King Nehemiah. That's a lie. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. If you come with us, we won't tell the king what we just said. We'll shred the letter, burn the letter, whatever they do back then. Then sent I unto them, saying, Nehemiah doesn't go, he sends somebody else. There is no such thing done as thou sayest. But thou feignest, pretend, lie, act, liars, feignest them out of thy own heart, not head, heart. The fool in his heart has said there's no God. Call them fools, call them folly. That's a lie. And I'm not worried. You know, Nehemiah had a good standing with the king and the queen. He was the cut. I mean, the king put his whole life upon Nehemiah. You realize any moment Nehemiah could put something on one of them graves, I, I don't know anything about poisoning, but he could have. And you imagine, like I said, when Nehemiah showed up to the king, he said, that, that was it. You, you were gone. You were put in prison. You, you washed your head. You won't be sad anymore. And I would be in sad and offended to king. Oh, you want to go to Jerusalem? How long? Artaxerxes was that type of king. Yeah. <laughs> he was wicked. And like I said, the queen could have been Esther. You really think, matter of fact, you know what? If you were, I think Nehemiah saves Tobiah or Sam Ballot or whichever one had this letter. He said, well, how do you say that? If they have gone to the king with his letter to say, Nehemiah, the king would not have believed them. And the king would have taken off their neck. Don't you dare lie about my friend. Listen, I put my life in his hand. I, I, hey, I was it Haman? He just put the bag over his head and take him out to the gallows. Nehemiah and Ezra were just no phonies and foodies of ancient Babylon and of the Medes and Persians and our Xerxes. These men were true to their word and we need to have that Christian character in us. That if somebody is going to lie about us, it's not going to be believed and I've had that happen in my own walk. I've had people try to lie to me and I've had the people who were the third party look back and say, no, I'm sorry, that's not him. That is not his character. Nehemiah has no fear. I know I say he don't, but he does it. I just, 
It ain't true. I mean, if the king were to come down, let's say he showed up, where would he find Nehemiah? In the dirt, in the rubble, building the fence, picking up a brick or a rock. And, okay, right there. Is that right, guys? Okay. That's not a king. That's not a ruler. Yeah, except for one group of people we learn in chapter, uh, the Tokiites, the Tikiites. But you see how desperate the enemy is? We had it happen one time. It was so funny. We're, we're at the farmer's market. We've been there many, many years. The Jehovah Witnesses called the cops and they say, well, they forbade us to be here. They have the right to be here. What gives them the right to preach to God like they're doing? And we got to go. No one told you to go. You just can't stay because all I say is, Thomas said, my Lord, my God. Thomas said, my Lord. I just kept saying 20, 30 times. You're the one that got offended. Now, there are, there are Daytona police that don't like what I do, but they, hey, that guy's respectable. I may not like him, but he's proficient in what he does. I don't like what he does, but, hey, he's caused us no problems. I told him to stop one time, and he stopped, and we had an hour and a half conversation. That's what we got to be as characters. We can't fight. We can't go into battle. We can't have anger to be shown. And look at verse 9. For they all made us afraid. The Jews that are building like, oh no, what are they going to do? They're going to... Saying, their hands shall be weakened for, from the work, that it be not done. Now therefore, O oh God, strengthen my hands. They're trying to stop the work. And it's remarkable again, I street preach... And, and, my ministry is free. People come up to me. That's not what Jesus would do. And you expect me to pack up and go home and run away and hide my tail for the rest of my life. You are turning people away. I'm supposed to get scared. I have people many times from Connecticut to here. Oh, we're going to call the cops on you. Here's my phone. It, it, the number's in the phone. You ask my family. They've seen it. Because I had I have discussed, I have looked at the law, I have looked at things I have done, and things that the law says I can do. And here's the phone. The phone number's right there. You want me to call? I can start the conversation if you want. And I've done that. All they're trying to do is stop the work of God. It's in the Old Testament, it's in the New Testament, and it's among Christians who do right. Don't be afraid that they're trying to stop you and say, hey, they tried to stop Jesus, didn't they? Did they not stop Jesus? Putting nails in his hands and his feet, did that not stop Jesus? Did not they put him in, in, the, in the tomb and sealed the tomb and said, that's it, he's done. For three days and three nights, he rolled that stone away, sat upon the stone and said, hi right, guys. And he has, they didn't stop it. Listen, they can't stop God. It ain't going to stop the ones that love God and want to do right. All right? Go ahead. Chop off my head. Kill me. Absent from the body. Praise with the Lord. Thank you. And I get a crown for martyrship. Now, I am not going to go so bold to say, well, what about they torture you? I have no idea. I can't say that. Under torture, I may give in. I shouldn't, but in the flesh, I'm weak. Don't stop building what God has had you to build. So afterward, I came unto the house of Shemini, the son of Deliah, the son of Methbeel, who was shut up. I call the, I, the title of this message today is, Oh no, a letter, shut up. <laughs> where I got it from. And he said, Let us meet. Be forewarned when they want you to meet. Have a meeting. I'm going to read to you something. You stay right here. I'm going to go to Proverbs real quick. I'm going to show you the wicked people, how they work. He said, Proverbs 1, verse 11. If they say, come, let us 
lay in wait for blood. The common thing is get that one person away. Potiphar's wife, come, let's fulfill our love together, sweetheart. You got to be forewarned. You cannot trust the enemy. That's why when you're in a public ministry, you must do as Jesus did. Set them out two by two. I know a Christian who went door knocking on his own because there was nobody in the church to go with him. It's, it's half right, it's half wrong. You ought to have somebody else. So let us meet together in the house of God this time. Let's meet in your house. Let's meet in your temple. Let's meet in your church. Is that not the building of God? Building of the assembly? The, the temple? Let's go to church. We'll meet there. You know the world said that today to the church? Let's meet in your house. And the church is saying, all are welcome. And look at the message in the churches today. Why? Because you let Sam Ballot in the church. You let Tobiah in the church. You left your guard down. And what what happens with the door? Jesus standing outside the door. You want to come out? I ain't going in there. The church is so filthy. Jesus, you got to come out. I ain't going in there. But we're so great, so wonderful. No, 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 no you're not. So he went, let's go meet in the house of God within the temple. You're not allowed there. <laughs> you're unclean. You're a, you're a heathen. You have nothing to do with God. What are you doing going to church? All are welcome. Mm. And you may not like what I'm saying, but it's the truth. I'm sorry. Hey, listen, I've been kicked out of churches for lesser things. But that's the truth. And when you got a worldly bunch of people that outrank the, the saved people in your church, and you got problems, don't come crying to me. Broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many that go there at. Straight is the gate that leads to life, and few go therein. If you allow the world into your church, you're going to have many go to Broadway. And look at the churches today. But you do it your way. I do what the Bible says. and The judgment seat of Christ, we'll find out. So let's go in the temple. Let us shut the doors of the temple. For they will come to slay thee. We're, you know, they're going to kill you. They're going to come with me. I'll protect you. Where would you shut the doors in the temple? In the holy place. Or one of the closet or the storage area. Why would you go there? But he said the temple. Let's go enter into the holy place. Uh-uh-uh-uh. They will slay thee. Yeah, in the night will they come to slay thee. Now, you know, he's trying, what's he trying to do? Let's seek asylum in the church. And the Catholic Church does that. You know, if you are, if you are a criminal, you run to our church. We'll sanctify you. We'll protect you from the government. I forget what that's called in the law, but that's there it is right there. And Nehemiah says, nope, sorry. Paul says, well, I'm guilty of the law. I refuse not to die. Nehemiah is not guilty. Well, it's like city of yeah, a city of refuge, but that guy was innocently involved in the crime. He really had no control over it. Nehemiah hasn't done nothing. This is a death. It's a blank death threat, and I'll protect you. The enemy? <laughs> the enemy protecting? And I said, <laughs> here we go, should such a man as I flee? And who is there that being as I am should go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. That's interesting. I'm not going. I don't belong in there right now. I'm not going to take refuge. I got a work to do. 
And lo, I perceive that God has not sent him, but that he pronounced. I think that. Uh, let me look at my markings here. That's the first time that word shows up. Pronounced. I have to change my markings on. Yeah, that's the first time it shows up. That he pronounced this prophecy against me. You mean there'll be people prophesying and teaching false doctrine? Really? No. And you would believe that every preacher and every pastor and every rabbi will be in heaven. Sorry. He said he's a liar. And lo, I perceive that God has not sent him, but that he had pronounced this prophecy against me, for Tobiah and Sambala had hired him. Oh, you mean men hired by the world to deceive the world and Christians? Yeah, they come knocking on your door on the weekends. You know, get up in the pulpit with a Bible. With the tail sticking out of their, out of their rear end. I don't mean tails of a suit either. Therefore he, therefore was he hired. He was hired. Nehemiah said, I, you know what, I think he was hired. Nehemiah comes back, you know what, here's a side note. He was hired. I found out he was hired. There would be men that deceive people that are out of the pulpit and they get a pay for deceiving you. They're hired. I think Jesus called them hirelings. They don't care for the flock. Let's, John chapter 10. Let's, let's look that one up. John chapter 10 about the shepherd. About these hirelings. They get paid to do what they do and deceive the people. In case you think I'm wrong, we're going to look at the words of Jesus. Uh, John chapter 10 verse... 11. Good place to start. I am the good shepherd. Would he deceive us? Absolutely not. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Be warned if you got a shepherd who's not there when you got problems. Be warning that when your shepherd's not there for you or anybody in the congregation. But he is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own sheep are not See if the world cometh, I mean, excuse me, see if the wolf cometh, the enemy, here comes the enemy, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, he's fleeing, and the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The hiring fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. When it comes to times of trouble and, and tribulation from that hireling is not going to be there. Oh, time for me to leave the church. I can go find somewhere else. And I know a guy who was, who was working on the board to hire a, a pastor for their church. And there were men there that had 8, 9, 10, 15 different pastorates. And he looked at me. He said, why would a man have so many pastorates under his belt? Because every time problem came along, bye, <laughs> see you later. Oh, oh, we got a pastor. We got a problem. Our church pastor. I'm out of town. Bye, see you. I'm gone. Find somewhere else. God's led me to go somewhere else. There it is. Now watch. He said, "Therefore he is hired that I should be afraid." <laughs> People will hire you to be afraid. We're going to get the cops. I don't care. I'm not afraid. I'm not doing anything illegal. You get a big tough man. Yeah, so you lay a hand on me, he going to jail. And he gets to go to jail, run across a Bible preacher in the jail. I don't know. And do so. And sin. It's a sin to hire somebody to scare a child of God. Did you get that? This guy was hired by Sambala and hired by Tobiah to scare Nehemiah and the children of Israel from doing their work. And God said, it's a sin. 
Don't be afraid of what they do to you in a public meeting. Just look at it and say, you know what? You're sinning. Oh, have sinning. Oh, I've never sinned. You trying to scare me? You have a better bet trying to scare you. You're a sinner. <laughs> yeah. And that they might have matter for an evil report. That they might reproach me. There it is. There it is. That's the whole thing right now. We want to get Nehemiah all by himself or any Christian all by himself so we can do Potiphar's wife. He wanted to rape me. You see his coat? And she completely outright lied about Joseph and Joseph ended up in prison. God saw it. God did not stop that from happening. Joseph, you were not supposed to be there alone. And we get in trouble in the public ministry because you ought not have been there alone. What are you going to do? Bible says two or three witnesses, and it shall be established. In this world today, you better be warned to have two or three people with you. And you better make sure the person who's going with you is going to stick by your side, too. That'll be next. They go out of churches two by two, and one will turn on you. My God... My God, there you go. My God. It's not a threat. That's not a curse. My God, think thou upon Tobias and Ballot according to these their words. Uh oh. And the prophetess, Nodiah. Ooh, they hired a woman. You know, the biggest thing to the prison ministry. And not only the, the, the Muslims, that, that's a big thing in the prison. Today. But you know the two biggest threats to prison ministry? Oprah and Joyce Myers. Don't you ever preach about Oprah. Don't you ever preach about Joyce Myers. You will cause a riot. They will swear by Oprah. A prophetess. She's a prophetess of, of atheism and everything against God. And she come out of a Baptist church, by the way. And you cannot tell them that Joyce Myers is dead. The Bible says a woman is not to be a soft authority over the man. I don't care. I like her. They got a prophet. They got a woman. And the rest, they'll get a woman in churches too. Now they even go one step worse. They got a woman who thinks she's a man that doesn't have any idea of what sexuality she is and a woman that will sleep with another woman. It's sickening. And the rest of the prophets, there were others. <laughs> there were others that would have put me in fear. There was a whole gang of them. So what happened? So the wall was finished. Hallelujah, glory to God. You know what we should hear when we get to the judgment seat of Christ? Should we not hear the words of Jesus on the cross? What's that? Lord, yes, it is finished. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yeah, I mean, you've got some ashes there, but man, the heat was on. <laughs> and when the heat is on, I'll give you gold and not ashes. How's that? How's that for a contradiction? When I put the heat on you and the devil put the heat on you, you've got gold, silver, and precious stone, no ashes. What do you have to say for yourself? Lord, it is finished. I hope I've done everything to your... That's, isn't that what Paul said? Let me go there. I'll stay there. Let me find those things. 2 Timothy. Paul's last words. Paul says, 2 Timothy 4... Verse 6. For I am now ready to be offered. In the time my departure is at, it's not like a flight. Flight 47, ready to go part. I have fought the good fight. I have finished, there it is, my course. I have kept the faith. How's that? Don't give up because you, then you can't tell Jesus I finished. You will follow the principles of Jesus if you finish everything by him saying on the cross, it is finished. And you can look up to Jesus, look at me, I say, Lord, it is finished. Don't quit. Keep going. It is finished. In the 20th and 5th day of the month, Eli, Eli uh, the note is September. 
in 52 days. That's the wall. 52 days. 52 days of these men harassing the children of Israel. And it came to pass that when our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their eyes. You know how you can tell a real true Christian? He went out today and somebody received Jesus as their Savior. Uh, really? Yeah. Their attitude. I want to tell you, I want to, don't you guys thank you for praying? My grandma, she's doing well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The attitude. They weren't happy. <coughs> the work of Nehemiah and the Jews, it is finished, and the people, the enemy's like, uh, eh. About the thing, they were much cast down in their eyes, for they perceived that the work was wrought of our God. How's that? They hated him, they tried to stop him, and the only thing they can say that was of God. And there are people today, in which I'm only going to speak of myself, and I'm not bragging. There are people who have been involved with the farmer's market ministry who's tried to stop us and we've been there for five years or four, four or five years and the only thing they can say, man, that's got to be of God we have threw everything at that guy I'll tell you another wonderful thing a testimony to the Farmer's Mark Ministry is it's divided into three places there is east, center, and west and the opposition of the music guy he's on the east and we're on the west and when I start preaching on the west side, all the customers are at the west side. I've seen it. And they say, well, you're driving away business. Not when I'm preaching. There's more people on my side than there are on the music side. To God's glory. And they, somebody's got to look back and say, you know what? That, that, that guy's got to be of God. We've seen the Jehovah Witnesses. They're gone. We've seen the politicians come. They come once a year. They're gone. But man, that, I mean, we weren't there today because I was sick. But they say, every week that guy is there. If he's not, there's got to be something wrong. For those who like us being there, I, you know, there's something wrong with him. But for the days we're not there, for the ones that hate us, ha <laughs> we get the victory, and then we show up next week. Now, the people that love it and love the Lord, like, yeah, glory to God, we missed you. The enemy's like, got to get some more amplifiers. But there's one thing can be said, the work of his God. And when a man stands before Jesus Christ, God, at the great white throne judgment, and Jesus says, depart from me, the workers of iniquity, I never knew you. He's going to bow that knee. He's going to say, Jesus Christ is the Lord. You know what he's saying? The work was well of God. The Bible says we're an atheist, prepare to meet thy God. Oh, we come from baboons. We come from, no, no you come from Jesus. You come from God. The work that we were made is of God. Moreover, in those days the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobiah, and the letters of Tobiah came unto them. Really? Are you telling me there's people in the congregation could be going against you? No. Yeah. Don't think everybody goes to church is right with God. For there were many in Judah sworn unto him. Because, because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, family connection, the son of Ara, the son of Jonathan, the, had taken the daughter of Michelin, the son of Beniah. Mixed marriage. And they reported his good deeds before me, and uttered, uttered my words unto him. And Jobiah sent letters to put me in fear. It's finished. But we ain't finished trying to destroy you. You know the Catholic Church during the time of, of Fox's Book of Martyrs? They tortured Christians. And they, they had the authenticity to call themselves Christians. 
But there were men, and I don't know their names, but there were a few of them. Wycliffe, I believe, is one. I believe is his name. I could be wrong. Forgive me if I am. But Wycliffe, if the name is correct, came with the English Bible. And they hated Wycliffe so much, and I may have the name wrong. Forgive me. They killed him. And they hated him so much that they drug his body out of the grave and burnt it more and cast it into the river. We hate that guy so much, even his death, we're going to take his dead, we're going to destroy it. And they'll turn around and say, oh, you don't have the love. Neither does your church. 